Hi, Kurt here with your value creation tip of the week. And today I want to talk about the greatest product launch, the greatest product value proposition um, probably ever. Um, it is obviously Steve Jobs when he announced the iPhone uh, back about 13 years ago. And um, I want to compare it to what we've been talking about um, in terms of value propositions. So, you know, we've talked in the past with these videos about uh, the fundamentals of a value proposition and that there's four concepts that you need to address every time. What's the need, the market need, the customer need? What's your approach for the offering and the business model? What are the benefits per cost of that? And um, how does that compare to the competition or the alternatives? And today I want to add um, a couple concepts. Uh, one is what we call a hook. Um, it's a brief opening statement that basically uh, gets the audience's attention, uh, like um, in, a, in a, a mystery a movie, you know, something happens in the beginning. So um, after that, people will listen to you. Um, then there's the NABC, and then there's an action at the end, because you're not just giving these presentations for the fun of it you're actually giving them to accomplish something and tell people where you're going and what they need to do next. So, um, so Steve Jobs basically answered all those questions and I wanna talk a little bit about that tonight and how he did it, because uh, it was really quite remarkable. Um, when, when I watch this, and I recommend you all watch this, um, it's on YouTube, it's just uh, tremendous. Uh, when I watch it, I often think, what was Nokia thinking? when he's giving this presentation, it's like, whoa, what, what just happened? Now, in a curious way, I have some insight into this, which I'll tell you at the end. So hang on, I'm gonna give you a tip into why Nokia probably was in trouble. So um, um, this presentation was also contrasted to almost every other product launch that you probably have seen. They, they mostly say how wonderful they are and how wonderful their product is. And they really don't compare it quantitatively with the competition. So it's kind of vague and basically their, their message is trust us, uh, we're wonderful and our product is wonderful. But not this time. This time it was really, really compelling. So today I have to go through uh, it in a slightly different order than he did, but um, I'm pulling out the concepts which are exactly the same as what we uh, always ask for when we're creating new innovations. And the reason we focus on these four fundamental questions, NABC, need approach, benefits per cost and competition, is they set the order and the direction for your new uh, venture. And if you get them wrong, and most people get them wrong, uh, you're going off in the wrong direction. So they're really, really important. And in this case, Steve Jobs really did uh, nail them. He got them all right. So what was uh, Steve Jobs' hook to the audience? Well, he gives uh, an introduction, um, says a few things about Apple. And then he says a couple of times, an iPod, a phone, and an internet connector. An iPod, a phone, and an internet connector. An iPod, a phone, are you getting it? Are you getting it? In other words, these things which most people thought were impossible to bring together, he was gonna say something about this that would uh, be astounding. So stick around, uh, wait for the punchline. Um, it was a pretty compelling pitch if you <laughs> were paying attention to it. So that was his hook. Uh, to keep everybody's interest to see how the story would play out. So then he started into the need. And he describes how today's smartphones were really not um, either smart uh, nor easy to use. You know, you had to use your fingers to kind of navigate the keys. And, um, and there wasn't much functionality. And he pointed out that what they wanted to do was create a leapfrog product that is way smarter than any mobile device had ever been and super easy to use. He even showed a graph um, with uh, you know, convenience and um, smartness. And he put, um, 
this new device that he was about to announce up in the far right corner. And of course, there was no, nothing else up there. Um, in, the, in the language we use, we call that a white space, um, where basically uh, there's a huge market. Um, um, you can do it, uh, Apple could do it. And there was very little competition. So he was defining a new white space. And pretty soon he was gonna define a new beachhead too of customers he was gonna go after. So that was how he started. So what was the problem? Well, he points out the problem is the keys. Um, as he called them, the bottom 40, that was the problem and the fact that they couldn't change. And the issue there is that every application needs a different interface. Um, if you can't change the interface, um, um, you can't do a lot of things. And how many keys can you put on a keypad? You're basically limited by the geometry of it. They get so small, you can't even uh, touch them with your fingers. So somehow that had to go away. Um, and he also says, well, how big is this market we're going after? Well, mobile phones, which is the white space, is actually they uh, sell about a billion units a year. That's a big market. And he says they want 1% of that in the first year for the smartphone segment, which you might call a beachhead, some beachhead, but still um, a place where there are uh, customers who can afford it and want that kind of functionality. So right from the get-go, uh, we have a pretty good idea of where he's going and what market he's going after and what the problem is for the customers, convenience and functionality. And he wants to completely transform that. How about his approach? Well, after he says you need to have a, a display that can be programmable, he reminds us that um, bitmap displays um, allow that. Um, um, but um, I, how to control it? That's the problem. How do you actually make it work with the kind of control and functionality you want? And he describes a mouse and a stylus and he's, no, 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 those, those are not gonna work. You can't walk around with a stylus or a mouse. And then he says, what we're gonna do is use the best pointing device in the world, your fingers. And he gives it a name, multi-touch. And he also tells the, the audience that because of this interface, they can use OS X um, 10 that um, has the full capability to support endless applications, which he teases us a little bit here that um, he's gonna to describe to us, which he's about to do. Um, so what's the business model for this? Um, this comes later, but I'll put it here because that's where we normally bring it up. Um, he points out that if you were to have uh, these three functions, an iPad, a phone, and an internet communicator, it would cost you uh, well over $500. Uh, but here's a device that's going to be, um, have enormous capability compared to those three um, even together. So how much should they price it for? Well, they price it for $4.99, which he argues is probably less than you could buy those other three. No premium, as he says, no premium. In other words, right from the get-go, he's basically saying in kind of nice language, he's gonna put those other categories out of business because he's gonna produce a device that can do all of those things at less price, less cost, but also with enormous increases in functionality. So his approach is obviously the, the, the bitmap display with touch and um, with a full premium based um, operating system. Okay, now that we know the, the need and the approach, um, he's on to the benefits per cost. And he goes through a long list of demos demonstrating what the iPhone can do and nobody else can. And he even says the killer app is making phone calls. He shows how convenient and easy that would be. And of course, he's taking a shot right at the heart of Nokia when he does this. And he, I'm sure he knew he was doing that. And um, of course, it is rich um, um, email on the phone, the first real web browser, uh, the best version of Google Maps. I mean, it just goes on and on like this. One, one amazing demo after another. Uh, things that you would have a heck of a time trying to do on a normal Nokia uh, phone with a, with a keypad. So uh, um, he's basically making the call that um, um, he's, there really is almost no 
a competition to what they can do. Nobody else can do all these things. And um, as we said, it's a similar cost of all those other devices. And um, the actual you know, demonstrated value, if you just think about convenience and how long it would take you to do something, you could calculate the benefits that way too, in terms of the time saved for the users. And he, 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 he goes around that sort of thing as well. So there's actually a quantitative measure of convenience that's uh, expressed uh, here over a, a touch, with a touch screen over a, a keypad. Okay, what about the competition? Well, all the way through this, he's uh, defining this new white space. So um, he's already putting himself in a place where the, the competition really can't um, at that point. Um, and in a market segment where they really are 10 to 100 times better in terms of convenience and functionality with no cost premium. And he, he makes a joke at one point, it's not a joke really, he said, and boy, have we patented it. Well, no kidding. He's putting up barriers every place he, he can do that um, to stay ahead of the competition. And as we all know, it only took seven years uh, for Nokia to go away at that point. So the last thing is, what's the action? What's going to happen? Well, he, he then goes into a description about how they're going to roll out the product and it'll start in June and um, how it'll then end up in Europe. And he goes through this. So he basically gives a hook uh, uh, the need, uh, this huge market, untapped market, the white space, then this approach for both the touch screen, but also with um, a full operating system. Um, all these benefits, all these are uh, killer apps that nobody else can do. And then he makes it clear that he's put up barriers everywhere to keep the competition at bay as long as he can. And with an action item that um, you'll be able to get one in June. So there it is, a hook, an ABC, and an action. So try that. The next time um, you put together a presentation, see if you can do that. So I said earlier, um, I had a little inside uh, scoop about what Nokia was thinking. It turns out a week after I got my iPhone, uh, the head of iPhones from Nokia visited me. Now, um, I have a long history in high definition television and consumer products. Uh, everybody comes to SRI to talk to SRI. So I'm kind of an interesting person, I would think, to talk to about what you think about this new product. So I handed it to him and I said, uh, what do you think? And he says, uh, it's a lousy phone. I went, oh, wow. Well, what, what do you think? Maybe it's something more than a phone. He said, no, nah, they don't know how to make phones. We're going to kill them. We're going to put them out of business. And I remember walking down the hall and talking to my friend, uh, Norman Oski, and saying, Norman, do you have any Nokia stock? And Norman said, no. And I said, well, good, because if you did, I'd recommend you sell it. When the head of that division doesn't even want to know why a customer prefers a product like that, um, there's something wrong in that company. They're in trouble. And of course, we know they were in trouble. They never recovered from this. One last thought. Um, Steve uh, Jobs was, uh, whether this is myth or not, but he didn't really do many um, uh, surveys or interactions with customers. Um, and um, uh, there's a reason for that. The, the reason is that customers really don't know what's possible, so it's hard for them to visualize a solution. So who, who thought of a touch screen? Well, Steve Jobs did. Uh, Nokia may have, but they didn't execute against it. So customers would know about that. There were lots of surveys done at the time, and what people said they wanted was a better keyboard. So asking them really wasn't going to give you much insight. And the, that's the problem, is you have to figure out what customers really need, not just what they say. Yes, you should talk to them. Yes, you should interview them. But your job is to actually figure out the real need, not the apparent need. And often, the real need is very, very different from what people think or what people say when you first talk to them. And Steve Jobs was a master at that. And it's not by accident that two weeks after we uh, launched the product from Siri, Steve Jobs is the one who called up our CEO to buy Siri, which added about $50 billion to the value of Apple. And no other company was interested in even talking to us. So that's my tip, value creation tip of the week. Um, when you're in your value creation uh, teams, put together an action um, plan presentation with a hook, 
your NABC, that's fundamental. You've got to answer those four questions and what you want to do next. What's your next action that you need to do uh, to move forward? So, and remember, um, it's through innovation that we're going to make the world a better place. Take care, be safe, bye-bye.